I was never served divorce papers. I would have signed them on spot. That never happened. Okay. I would have said, even if I don't get married again, but you can't continue in an abusive marriage. You know, mistreated. Uh, all the res uh, responsibilities of the family are left for me for years and years. Children's school fees. Taiba International. Very expensive. You pay in US dollars. Okay? Food. Medical care. Everything. Dressing. They, when the kids stayed in Uganda for a few years, we traveled to America together because they were born here in America. So it was their right and the Lord provided, okay? Um, there was no such thing. I was never served. Okay, at least I'm trying not to cry. If you see me covering my eyes, that's because I don't want you to see the tears. But God is helping me not to cry. So if a tear comes, then I can cover my face. I was never served divorce papers. And also, 14 years allegations is a lie. We have pictures and videos, TV recordings, even in television stations in Uganda, because the ministry has been on TV for years and years. Our downtown church that I lead, we have two churches in Kampala, one at Pride Theater and another one on Interior Road. Before COVID-19, doctor, the respected man of God that I, I will still respect forever. And I'll never try to trash his name. Doctor, Salong, Vincent, Katongori, used to come. And people at church remember. Church people are sending me messages. He used to come and preach at our church in downtown Kampala. So I don't know what the 14 years we are talking about. Okay? And the kids know the truth. The kids are grown. They are over 18 years old. People, church people know. His, his relatives know. He used to come with his brothers and friends to preach at the church that I lead in Kampala. Does that look like a church of a woman you have separated with or divorced if you're still preaching there? Again, I remind you guys, I was trying to be quiet. But it's some of you, my supporters that are watching, who told me if you keep quiet and these lies continue, at the end of the day, I'll be the trash. I'm not an evil woman. I'm not evil. I'll never be wicked. I can't do wicked things. I don't believe like that. I've grown up in church. He found me in America. He found me already a preacher. Many of you know my story in TV, on TV and newspapers since 1982. A small girl in, in Bujirikapianga went to heaven. Her name is Irene Manjit. She preaches. She prays for people and they are healed immediately. She has led people from all different backgrounds uh, to salvation with miracles. That small used to be ugly village girl of Bujirikapianga is now 51 years old. I am Irene Manjid. He found me in America. He asked me to marry him. Limousine wedding. Limousines, not one. Red carpet. A nice church with our American Caucasian pastors. Okay? A marriage certificate in the court of law. Okay. According to him, he already divorced. But why would you continue sleeping with a woman you already divorced? I'm not afraid to talk about that too because married people sleep together. And we are married and so we did. Married people sleep together. And because we are married, we were married legally. And I didn't know he had filed a divorce. We were sleeping together. Why would you sleep with a woman when you're a pastor in the same house, either in our house in America or our house in Uganda, when you know you divorced her? And you know that the Bible says God hates divorce, and you know that it's not biblical. You know Jesus said the day he comes back, no one shall ever know. What if Jesus so shows up now and we end up in hell? We'll burn in hell. And 
I'm not here to make any accusations. But the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We have pictures of Dr. Katongo Vincent Salongo preaching at the church I lead in Kampala, downtown Kampala. Okay? So does it mean that he was using me? Isn't that embarrassing to a man to use a woman? That you know you divorced, yet you're a pastor? Wow, wow, wow. So, 14 years are not true. And his own relatives, friends, our children can testify. My children told me today they were almost chasing me from this life, saying, Mom, let's do it. It's me who is telling them, calm down and do it in a way that you don't disrespect your father because he will always be your father whether we are together or not it's me who stopped to them they were ready to, to get here on this media and tell the world the truth because kids have a memory you don't just show up years and years later when they needed you when they're in the hospital our daughter Nisi was operated at Cardiac Hospital in Kampala, one of the most expensive hospitals because she was born with something wrong with her and she had never been hospitalized before. But um, she kept having uh, stomach aches and I, uh, I thought because she went to her periods when she was really young. So as a parent, I was concerned and I drove her myself to Cardiac. At that time, they were still in Bukoto before they uh, changed it to another name for the hospital. And I said, something is wrong with my daughter. She sleeps in pain. Could it be because she, because she went in her periods when she was only like 11 or 12 years old. Because, you know, kids that eat well and are healthy these days, they go to periods early. And some blood had been gathering in her womb, which is a danger that she would get older after university, get married, and can have children because her womb was damaged by the blood that sat in her womb and we didn't know because we are not medical personnel. Until the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, drive that kid and take her to Cardiff. Then I called the father. Thank God he was in Uganda at that time. I said, you know, she's not okay. They have taken her them to the theater, to the operation ward or the uh, you know surgery room they put her to sleep we were all i was standing there crying they put nisi my twin daughter to sleep so they can cut her and operate her uterus to remove the blood that lodged in her womb and we didn't know we, we wondered why this guy was girl was crying at night. You know, she couldn't sleep at school. She was crying at Tiber because they stayed at Tiber International during the weekend. They came home on weekends. Uh, friends were telling me the same thing. Her, 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 she, I think she was uh, leading her dorm as far as keeping the beds organized. She, she's very neat and clean by nature. She comes home. We buy her Tylenol or, or painkillers, and she can't sleep. So as a mother, I was in pain too. I was painful in pain because of my daughter my child suffering the bill comes and finally dad is here the bill is due to be paid at uh, Kadik Sirina Sente I've been hearing the word Sirina Sente for years and years and years so I got used to it I got used to it and I said as a woman I was brought up told to respect a man so when daddy says there's no money I find a way to get things going. Make sure they, I find a way to make sure there's food in the house. Uh, I even would look in, you know, the respected man's car to make sure there's fuel. Many times I would drive his car to the gas station, the petrol station, fill it with the car, surprise him, bring it back, give him the key. And when he's starting his car, he looks at the car and he sees it's full of fuel, petrol. <laughs> And I shut my mouth about it. I come from a very strong-willed family with tough people by nature. Whenever they came by, I wanted things to look good because I didn't want to embarrass the big man of the house. 
If they ask me, how is everything? I say, everything is fine. Just like a woman who is trying to cover up and keep the respect of your man. But at the end of the day, the lies are being told. No. And who said I would refuse to sign the divorce papers? Why do it in, 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 in secret? And waste my time all these years. Everywhere I preach, even if I'm in Japan, I travel all over the world. Even if in, I'm in Brussels, I, I travel, I go to France, I go to Germany, to the UK. I have an invitation for Israel. If I go to Turkey or I go to Canada or Australia or New Zealand, the number one thing I do, even if you watch our YouTube DVDs, is to recognize and respect my husband in his absence. That I'm a married woman. I also used it to keep men away from me because of my looks. If men think you're free, they will jump all over you and make you lose focus. I, I'm not the type of woman who sleeps around. I'm, I'm a Christian, I fear the Lord. I don't even know how to ask a man for money to go to the saloon. I've never done that, I've grown up in church. I don't know how to seduce a man to give me money and buy me a car. No man has ever bought me a car and I've driven every car that I can think of. I don't know how to talk him. When I discovered that my respected father of my children would not take care of the family, I left it alone. I said, thank God you provide. I'll go to ShopRite. I'll send someone to Nakasero Hospital, I mean Nakasero Market. I'll send someone to Owino. Because I like yams and my uni, and the good ones are at Owino Market. I would, because our ministry office is not far from Owino, so I would say, go buy me some yams or some matoke, some mayuni. Okay? Um, I left it alone because I knew that no matter how I talk, food will not be bought in the house. I'm surprised that some of the people that know the truth of our background are beginning to side with him. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. If I was a bad woman, I'd be reminding them and saying, don't you remember what you told me? Don't you remember when I cried and complained what you told me? Why are you now taking sides? What's wrong? Aren't we servants of God? What happened to salvation these days? So I kept quiet. To protect the marriage and to, pro to protect our status as pastors. I kept quiet. My own relatives would say, something is wrong. You are too strong. Why are you not telling me? And I'm like, uh -uh. I don't know what happened to and they are ready to talk. It is me who was threatened to be killed. I wish I can mention the names of some of his people who told me in a security. Was his own people. Privacy and names observed. Like you would say, protocol observed. But manji say, Irene. But one is a security. How would you feel if something like that happened, and you are looking at the person's body language? When he's coming back in the country, he doesn't tell you. He just shows up at the gate. And the, you know, the security or the police people at home opens for them. Okay? When he's traveling, he, you, get, you, you find him in the bedroom getting ready to travel. We don't know whether there's food in the house or the school fees of the children are paid or any bill is paid or electricity bill. Thank God we, you know, we, we don't rent. He's traveling. He's leaving. It's at night, the flight is at 11 at night, and I have to go on radio in the morning. Mm. Some of the women that are pointing fingers, you wouldn't manage. Someone is thinking, 
Nzima mara gani mfuna nti uluvi ni ngani pastor manji ni njaga la kuasa ngana ngemboka kati mbaga ya no I have to know the person I I have